Welcome to Bonnie Recap. I'm going to explain the movie, The Eighth Day of a Week, released in the year 2017. The movie begins with a girl named Jiang Wei drawing a sketch of her crush. She is a high school student that always sleeps in her class. As a result, she's frequently targeted by her teachers, but she believes that they go after her because she is dumb and fat. Jiang's mother is also not happy with her grades and always pushes her to work harder. She often becomes the laughing stock of her classmates and she always wishes for a miracle. Jiang's daily life involves picking up her favorite street food and admiring her crush, Ku Pei, who is not only intelligent but also extremely kind. Jiang has always dreamt of becoming popular, so she runs for the school election. However, the chances of her winning are slim because the competition is extremely tough. Currently, a girl named Chao Min is the favorite to win. To turn the tide in her favor, Jiang tries to deliver a moving speech to convince other students to vote for her, but she ends up making a fool out of herself. Later, she personally requests all her classmates to elect her as the student union president. However, one of her classmates snatches her backpack and throws it into the tree outside. She pleads to other students to help her bring it down, but they all refuse. Left with no choice, Jiang climbs the tree and tries to fetch her bag. She manages to get to it, but ends up falling down with it. Over the course of the next few days, the election dynamics quickly change, and Jiang manages to get 20 votes, climbing to the fifth position on the chart. To keep Jiang from gaining momentum, one of her bullies, Cheng, conspires with her friend to set Jiang up. They accuse Jiang of stealing their wallet and frame her by planting the purse in her bag. As a result, Jiang's teacher disqualifies her from the competition, despite her claim of being innocent. In the next scene, a devastated Jiang wanders around the city instead of going back home. An old woman notices her sitting by herself and approaches her. Strangely, the woman knows what Jiang is going through and advises her to go home. Puzzled and slightly frightened, Jiang wonders if the old woman is following her. Lo and behold, the woman reads Jiang's thoughts like an open book. Jiang confronts the old woman and demands to know her identity. However, the woman says her identity is irrelevant and waves her hand over Jiang's face. Next, Jiang wakes up in her bed. She realizes that she's late for school and quickly gets dressed. Before leaving, she notices an unfamiliar bracelet on her desk and puts it on. She presses the button on it and heads for her school. For some reason, the city seems unusually empty and Jiang's favorite food truck is unmanned. She brushes it aside and heads for her class. While parking her bike in a hurry, she ends up tearing her skirt. She frantically rushes into the building, but much like the rest of the city, Jiang's school is completely deserted. She initially worries before she realizes she has the whole world to herself and she can rule it however she pleases. While goofing around the school, she notices her bully Chao Min's cycle and hangs it on the basketball hoop. She then vandalizes her school's stadium before heading back home. After finishing all the snacks in her home, Jiang collapses on her bed out of exhaustion, inadvertently pressing the button on her bracelet, and something seems to shift. Moments later, Jiang's mother walks into her room and wakes her up. Jiang learns that it's still early in the morning and heads for her school. On her way there, she notices that her favorite food truck has run out of chicken. Guilt-stricken, she heads to her school without stopping by for a snack break. When she gets to school, it's revealed that Chao Min is stuck on the basketball board instead of her bike, while the letters Jiang spray-painted on the wall are still there. Panicking, Jiang runs to her desk and notices the tear on her skirt from her dream. It turns out Jiang wasn't dreaming at all. After school, Jiang tells her mother about the strange occurrence, but she doesn't believe her and advises her to rest. Jiang returns to her room to find the old woman from earlier in the movie feasting on her snacks. Naturally, Jiang panics and prepares to fight the woman, but the latter calms her down and explains the strange occurrence to her. It turns out the bracelet has magical powers and grants its owner one more day per week. During the eighth day of the week, Jiang has the world to herself and she can do whatever she wants. She can use the eighth day at once or little by little throughout the week. Every change she makes in the alternate timeline is reflected in real life. So, if she moves an object when it's being held by a person, the person moves with the object. 
Before vanishing, the old woman tells her even if someone steals her bracelet, only Jiang can make it work. Jiang uses the bracelet to gain access to Pei's dorm room. After admiring Pei's medals and trophies, Jiang leaves him a letter, introducing herself as a girl named Pai from another space and time. When Pei finds the letter, he brushes it aside as a prank, but he finds more such letters that she's left behind to convince him that it's not a prank. Pei finally writes back to her, and the two become pen pals. When Pei learns that he can't find or see her, he calls her an angel. Later, Jiang again tries to explain to her teacher that she didn't steal Chao Min's wallet, but when he refuses to believe her, Jiang punishes him by moving him with his desk into the loo using the bracelet. The strange occurrence continues to puzzle the school authorities, but they can't seem to get to the bottom of the issue. Meanwhile, Jiang continues to write letters to Pei, and when she learns that Pei and his team can't play a friendly match with students from another school due to their classes, she takes it upon herself to extend the short autumn break into an 11-day holiday by replacing the official notice with an edited copy. The students couldn't be more excited, but the class teachers are left puzzled. On the day of the match, the other team dominates Pei's team, so Jiang helps the former gain a lead and eventually win the match. The school principal soon learns about the blunder made by the teachers and orders them to call all the students to school. Pei figures out that Pai, aka Jiang, helped him in the football match and asks her to not intervene next time, as he wants to win by himself. Pei also wonders if Pai is good in studies. This embarrasses Jiang, and she decides to cheat in her exam. Consequently, she ends up topping the exam and instantly becoming her teacher's favorite, much to Chao Min's dismay. She's grouped by her teacher with the other top three students, Pei and Chao Min, for a school project. During this time, Jiang manages to impress Pei with her drawing skills. He also starts seeking her help in solving difficult problems, which forces Jiang to use her eighth day where she scans the library for solutions. Jealous of her soaring popularity, Chao Min challenges Jiang to a race. However, Jiang effortlessly beats her with the help of the bracelet. Shocked by being defeated by a plus-sized girl like Jiang, Chao Min and her friend go through the racing video. They notice Jiang clicking the button on her bracelet and strangely changing position. Meanwhile, Jiang, aka Pai, confesses to Pei that she's one of her classmates, and Pei insists on meeting her. Jiang eventually agrees and tells him she'll wear a white dress. When she scans her wardrobe for a decent white dress and fails to find one, she breaks her piggy bank to gather her savings. Later, she reaches a store and finds a pretty white dress, but becomes sad as it's out of her budget. As a result, she sneaks the dress inside her backpack and runs away. At school, Xiao Min and her friends steal Jiang's bracelet from her locker. However, when they can't make it work, they raid her bag and find the notes Jiang has written to pay. Afterwards, they throw the bracelet in the dustbin, since it's of no use to them. Without the bracelet, Jiang carries a chit to the exam hall and quickly gets caught. The teacher informs her mother about it and summons her to the school. On top of this, the owner of the shop from where she stole the dress finds the notebook she inadvertently left behind and comes looking for her in the school. Jiang's mother, who was defending her daughter so far, saying Jiang could never cheat in exams, slaps her. Jiang breaks into tears and runs away. Word about Jiang quickly spreads like wildfire, and she again finds herself wandering around the town. She ends up at the garbage dump, where she miraculously finds her bracelet. Jiang then notices a warehouse and decides to spend the night there. When she doesn't return home, Jiang's mother grows worried and looks for her the whole night. Taking advantage of Jiang's disappearance, Chao Min poses as Pai and meets Pei. This further devastates Jiang as she spends another day away from her home, stealing food from stores using the bracelet. A year passes by, and she starts collecting stray bottles to pay for her meals. One day, the old woman from earlier in the movie shows up, and Jiang pleads with her to take the bracelet back and reverse the time she has lost. The old woman tells her the bracelet is not the problem, but her mind is. Jiang could use the eighth day for self-growth instead of cheating and tormenting other people. Before leaving, the old woman advises Jiang to go back home. Jiang takes her advice and returns home after one year. 
Jiang's despondent mother's eyes light up upon seeing her before warmly embracing her. The next day, Jiang goes to school after missing school for a year. As a result, she has to study with her juniors. Jiang's new classmates tease her like her older ones, but this time, she doesn't use her bracelet to punish them. Instead, she uses her eighth day to study and exercise. While studying, she stumbles upon the old notes she wrote to Pei and decides to visit his dorm. To her joy, she finds a wall full of notes that Pei wrote to her over the year, hoping she would reply one day. It's revealed that Chao Min couldn't keep up her lie about being Pai and eventually came clean to him. This is music to Jiang's ear and she writes to Pei. She apologizes to him for disappearing, explaining that she had made some mistakes. Jiang promises him that she'd meet him after she works on herself. Vowing to change, Jiang cleans her room and throws away all the junk she had accumulated over the years. Another year passes by, and Jiang loses several pounds and considerably improves her score. Jiang's former classmates begin to take notice, and one day, Pei approaches her and asks her if she's Pai, but she doesn't come clean to him because she's caught off guard. Later, she decides to reveal herself, but she learns that Pei is leaving. It turns out Pei's father was in prison and he initially wanted to cut him out of his life, but after seeing Jiang transform herself, he learned that people can really change themselves. Jiang immediately stops time and rushes to the railway station. However, she's already used most of her eighth day, so she isn't able to freeze time. Jiang eventually finds Pei, who has already boarded the train and is set to leave. She tries to confess about her identity, but fails as the glass of the train is soundproof. Suddenly, she comes up with an idea and writes down the value of Pi on the ground. Seeing this, Pei becomes shocked as he finally knows the real identity of his pen pal. Despite this, the train leaves the station and a devastated Jiang starts crying. In the next scene, Jiang returns the bracelet back to the old woman, saying it needs a new owner as she no longer needs it. The movie ends as she delightfully runs through the streets. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.